Hi there. My name is Mr. Presenter. And my job is to decode research results. By this I mean that I make research understandable to everyone. If you want to understand and be critical to research, you need to understand how the research has been conducted. In other words, you must understand the methods used to arrive at the results. There are several ways to design a research study. The study we're going to look at now is called a Randomized Controlled Trial, or RCT for short. Controlled trials have been around since 600 years before Christ. The first known controlled trial was carried out by someone called Daniel, who examined the health effects of a vegetarian diet versus food from the king's table. Today, RCTs are used for a variety of purposes and is thought of as the gold standard when it comes to measuring the effect of different interventions. Such interventions could, for example, be new drugs or adaptions to the workplace. In an RCT, randomization means that the interventions that are being evaluated are randomly distributed across the participants in the trial. The randomization process can, for example, be conducted by use of a database that generates numbers to indicate who will receive which intervention. Controlled means that there is a control group, which the intervention group is tested against. The control group should be as similar to the intervention group as possible. The only difference is that they do not receive the intervention. However, because the control group also follows the trial, participants often have the impression that they are receiving an intervention, and might therefore show an effect of the treatment. This is known as the placebo effect. So, now that we know what randomized and controlled means, let's find out how the trial itself is conducted more practically. We want to measure the effect of a new intervention designed to help young adults on disability benefits back to work or education. This group has increased considerably in recent years. The effect of the new intervention will be measured against care as usual, or what they would have been offered with today's current practice. First, presenter reviews previously conducted research to find results on effective interventions. When the research results have been reviewed, presenter starts collaboration with the providers of existing interventions. By doing this, we can develop the best possible intervention based on current knowledge. We call this professional practice. Once we've designed and thoroughly tested the intervention we want to evaluate, preparation for the RCT can begin. The first step is called the inclusion process. We invite our eligible target group, in this case young people on disability benefits, to participate in the trial by sending them an invitation letter. Persons wishing to participate have to give their written consent. The participants then receive a questionnaire they fill out before the trial starts. In this way, we can identify the participants' current situation. We call this the baseline measurement. This is an important step, as we need to ensure that the intervention group and the control group are as similar as possible before the trial starts. After the baseline questionnaire has been completed, the randomization can start. The participants are randomly placed into either the intervention group or the usual care group. If possible, the participants are unaware of which group they're in. This is called blinding. After three months, both groups complete the same questionnaire as they received at the baseline measurement. We can now see if more of the participants in the intervention group have returned to work or education compared to the control group. In this graph, for example, we can see that there are fewer people on disability benefits in the intervention group after three months. This could mean that the intervention has worked better than current practice. Now we have seen how a randomized controlled trial works. RCTs may sound complicated, and it can be challenging to carry out the experiments correctly. Yet, as we've seen here, Understanding the principles behind the method is not necessarily that difficult. 
presenter, Making Sense of Science.